God, I said, God, you said excellent wisdom comes through praise. So I'm praising you. You're deserving of praise. You're not deserving of my complaints. You're deserving of my praise. So I'm going to give you the praise. And the more I begin to praise God, all of a sudden the anointing comes. And the Holy Spirit comes and then he begins to speak. God has prepared better things for you. You believe God. We believe God together. So back now to this. So the kingdom of God has concepts and principles and laws of faith. Remember what he says. Without faith, it is impossible. It's not possible to please God if faith is not in operation. Isn't that right? I could not come to Jesus Christ. If somewhere I didn't exercise faith in what he says, after I heard the gospel, I came to him and accepted Jesus into my life. I had to apply faith, right? Now, this can sound foolish, and to the world it is foolish. How can somebody save you? How can a man dying on the cross uh, uh, cause you to go to heaven? And it's, it's nonsense to the Greeks, right? But to those that, are, that believe, it's not nonsense, right? We believed and all of a sudden Christ came into our lives and there was a witness in our heart that we belong to God. Why? Only because we exercise faith. So there are principles and concepts and laws of faith in this kingdom for the subjects of this kingdom that we must learn if we're going to uh, uh, succeed and have a prosperous and, ev- and, and a victorious life in God. We must get to know these laws and principles, right? And the Bible says we're strangers and sojourners and pilgrims, right? So we've come into a place and uh, 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 heaven is our home now, but we've got to learn about this new life and this, 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 this uh, destination. We belong to God now. We're strangers down here. So this world is no longer our home. Well, that brings me to another question. If I don't know that, I'll put all my stock in trying to be happy down here. Because I don't know that I'm a citizen from another country. That's what the Bible says, isn't it right? We may live 70, 80, or 90 years if we're blessed here. But after that, we're going to spend eternity somewhere. We're going to spend eternity with God. And so it's, it's, it's good to get to know a little something about God right now, right? Yeah. You don't want to get in heaven and feel like, what are these people praising God for? What's wrong with them? <laughs> because you didn't exercise it down here. Isn't that right? And I know it's not going to happen like that, but I just want you to get the point that I'm making. Because if we get to heaven, we're going to learn to praise. Isn't that right? God is good. But God is so good. And, and, and God... I, I hear him. I listen to him to us, and not on this, 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 this church, but to the people uh, of God, just, just encouraging them, praise me, praise me, worship me. And, 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 and one person said, I wonder if God's there on an the ego trip. No, he's not. It's for our benefit. It's for our benefit. God is deserving of praise. He is so good that we cannot comprehend how good he really is. He deserves all the praise. And so when we praise him, we're applying wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. So it's for our benefit. And so the Bible says wisdom is the key thing in life, right? So if I learn to praise God, I've learned something very basic and very important to my success. I learned that praise is comely to the upright, and whoever offers praise, they are glorifying God. Come on, let's pause and give a praise, praise break. Hallelujah. That's it, give him praise. He's deserving. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible in Psalm 100 says, uh, uh, Serve the Lord with gladness. Wow. Serve him with gladness. Are you there? Look at your neighbors. Are you there? Serve the Lord with gladness. Don't you go back to your home complaining. You know, serve him with a glad heart. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I tell you, he, it took me a while, but God says, son, when you get up in the morning, when you put your feet down on the floor, lift your hands to me and begin to magnify me. And I had to learn that, saints. It didn't come easy. Sometimes I, I, sometime I didn't want to get out of bed. God said, no, you can't stay there. Put your feet on the floor and lift your hands. And bless the Lord. Can you lift your hands and let's bless him. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's deserving of all praise. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I, I share this. I, I just share this. My father was a good man. He said, uh, I don't like when preachers tell me, try to tell me to praise God. I know how to praise God. But the Bible says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He said, the Lord's name is to be praised. Isn't that right? You look outside, there's the sun up. If the sun is up, then you need to praise God. Hallelujah. He said, the name of the Lord is to be praised. From the time the sun comes up to the sun, time the sun goes down. Hallelujah. Praise is, praise is what's happening. All right. So, the path to a deeper life. You, you, we want to go deeper in God. You, 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 you don't want the same thing to be happening day after day. You know, just, just frustrated with life and frustrated with family, frustrated with, with job, frustrated, you know, just not happy, just looking for a way out. When you come to the kingdom of God, that is the way out. That is your way out because you've come from death into life. Hallelujah. And everything that pertains to life and godliness is in him. And it's been given to us through the knowledge of God and his son. And one of the things that the Lord said to me, he said, excellent wisdom comes through praise. And I find out when I begin to praise God. If I'm in a situation where I need an answer, needs God to do something, I don't complain and I don't say how bad it is. I don't get discouraged, but I lift my hands and I begin to praise and magnify God. I said, God, you said excellent wisdom comes to praise, so I'm praising you. You're deserving of praise. You're not deserving of my complaints. You're deserving of my praise, so I'm going to give you the praise. And the more I begin to praise God, all of a sudden the anointing comes and the Holy Spirit comes and then he begins to speak and gives me insight and gives me wisdom right in the midst of my situation that I couldn't figure out what to do. Praise. Wisdom will come. I'll never, I remember, I was saying, God, I just want to minister to people. You know, I said, you, you said everywhere you go, I, I want to have something to say about it. And everywhere you go, I want to, uh, you to be a blessing. And so one day I was like, Lord, okay, I'm sitting here, and I want to be a blessing to somebody. So he said, well, praise me. I started praising and worshiping and thanking him. And a little while, then God started to talk to me. Call this person. Pray with him. Do so and so. Go over here. And as I went, my day was so effective and prosperous. Why? Because wisdom comes through praise. Wisdom is giving God his due. Hallelujah. Not when you feel like it. Because he's always worthy. Isn't that right? 
practice that, saints, when we begin to practice that and see what God will do. So we're talking again back on the subject of forgiveness. Now, let me, let me share with you a few things here. I want you to please bear with me. I'm not going to be long. Um, what the scripture says. First, look at Ephesians. If you have your Bibles, follow with me so that you know that I'm not just talking off the top of my head. Ephesians chapter 4. This is Paul the Apostle writing to the church at Ephesus. He says on verse, okay, if you're there, say amen. Amen. Verse 29 in chapter 4, Paul said, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, that is, that it may minister grace to the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed To the day of redemption. We talked about being sealed. Then he said let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And do what? And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Isn't that marvelous? Look at what he says in Colossians. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Two books over. First two verses says in chapter 3, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, because you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now look at verse 12 and 13. 12 says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity or love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. And be ye what? Thankful. Be ye thankful. I'll come back to that. First Peter chapter three. Flip on over to the book of First Peter. First Peter chapter three. He says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won. By the conduct or conversation of the wives. While they behold, look at your chaste, pure conduct coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and a wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Verse 7, likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel, And as being heirs together, this is what I want you to see. And as being heirs together, somebody say together, Together. of the grace of life. And this is the other point I want you to see. That your prayers be not hindered. Stagnation can come when there's disharmony between the husband and wife. Stagnation can come because the prayers cannot be answered because there's bitterness and unforgiveness and God wants to heal. And so Peter points it out. And, okay, we're almost down to a conclusion here, but I want to turn your attention to Genesis 37. God has given us answers to our concerns so that he might help us and as we heed these things, then God is going to involve himself in a very special way. Genesis 37. Genesis 37. Verse 1. Genesis 37. Verse 1.
Genesis 37. Genesis 37. All right. The Bible says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought to his father their evil report. Now Israel, meaning, meaning Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Now the Bible was not saying this was right. Are you hearing me? He's pointing out his heart. Sometimes you see it in the Bible, you think, okay, this has got to be right. No, this is permissible. No, he's showing Jacob's heart. And he says, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Now, I want you to see what happens when there is partial treatment. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. And could not speak peaceably to him. What are you pointing out? I'm pointing out that sometimes the condition of our hearts will not allow us to speak peaceably to others. Sometimes it's a dead giveaway. When there are areas in our hearts that need to change. When there's unforgiveness or anger in our hearts. We can't speak peaceably to others. And the Bible points it out so that we can see that Joseph's brethren hated him because of their father. And so they speak, spoke ill with him and harsh and perhaps anger because they were angry with him. But thank God, God did something after he exalted Joseph. But I pointed that out so that you can see sometimes some signs of unforgiveness is, is when we uh, uh, can't speak peaceably to others. Sometimes dead, uh, uh, unforgiveness is a dead giveaway. If somebody comes in your presence, if you're in a place eating, if you're somewhere, and somebody that you have ought against, and they come in there, there's something that just jokes you. You just feel uneasy. You just something goes on. That means there's something down in the heart ram. God wants to heal. You say, well, how you know all this? Oh, I've been there. That's how I know that. And God had to heal me. He said, let it go. You have to let it go. You can't carry things. I've seen people carry things to their grave. I've told you the story of people that stood by their bedside. They just wouldn't forgive. Hurt my heart. I couldn't do nothing about it. But we have the power through Christ to forgive. God will get involved. He doesn't leave us to do it alone. He's the one that will help us. But he needs our, our will. Because if he says, son, I want you to forgive. And I says, I don't want to. There's nothing he can do. And people can be praying for me. And he's praying for me. Until my will says, I choose to forgive. Ain't nothing going to happen. And I can remain Stagnated for years. But God is, I'm persuaded, brethren, of greater things for you. You will forgive because you believe that God will forgive you. Isn't that right? I believe that about you. I believe that about the audience that I'm preaching today. I believe that people that will hear this word will be broken and contrite and will begin to say, Lord, I heard from you. It was beyond the preacher, but I heard your voice talking to me about my heart, about my situation. And I'm choosing today, God, to let it go and let myself live by the power and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. God will help you. Hallelujah. He will help. Because he loves us, he says. That's a way the kingdom is operating. So God wants us. He wants to do something in our lives. And I heard earlier there's a shift. And indeed, it is a shift coming. 
And I heard one preacher said that in the earlier days, one of the moves was signs and wonders, and, and uh, God moved in such a way. But then there was another man of God who said God was dealing with him about his life. And he told him, he said, this last move is going to be about holiness. People are not going to live any kind of way. And so if he's working on you, just know he wants you to be a part of the move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In times past, God used preachers. Their lives were, they were in adultery. They were fornicating. They were doing things that they shouldn't. And they had bad attitudes and bad hearts. But this day is a new day. And God is not permitting it today. Because this last move of God is going through and we, people are going to see the holiness of God flowing through the people of God. Isn't that all right, y'all? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You say, well, yeah, I know, but, you know, God is, yeah, I know he, we, we're not perfect enough. But, you know, you've got to understand how many people that are backslidden and will not come back to God because of church leaders and people in the church offended them and wouldn't change their hearts toward them. And I'm out witnessing the people out there in the parks and areas. I am amazed. So many of them have been in church, but they're no longer in church. And I asked them, well, what's, why are you not in church? What was it? They he hawing around and then finally they say, well, you know, this sister in the church, or this deacon in the church, or this brother in the church. So how can God send the harvest in when we, we could offend others? God doesn't want that. When he sends babes in, he don't want them to be hurt. He wants the babes to be embraced. Will you be a part of this last day move? from God will you allow him to do in you whatever he wants to do would you not compare yourself with others will you only hear what God has to say about you will you be a vessel for God will you bow your heads with me father in Jesus name there is a path to a deeper life and that path is to forgive, to let go. I, I know that there are other things that cause a stagnation like fear and speaking wrong words. But one of the paths is forgiveness. Because that's a characteristic of the kingdom of God. And Lord, you gave the example of God the the prodigal son and his elder brother his elder brother was with the father but he was angry but Lord today through your word there are people here that want to make the transition they hear your word and they want to change and may we submit to them that you will help them you will not leave them to fight it alone. You will be right there. Because you're a God of mercy. And a God of compassion. You said in your word. If we sin we have an advocate. Jesus Christ. The righteous. He's the propitiation for our sins. Not for ours only. But for the sins of the whole world. While we're praying, I want you to begin to just ask God, Lord, is there somebody that I need to forgive? Has my life been stagnated for years because some person hurt me? Maybe it was my parents, or maybe it was my siblings, or maybe it was my relatives. Somebody hurt me, or maybe it was my spouse that hurt me, and I, I wasn't able to let it go. I've carried it these many years. What about you today? There's a clarion call from the Lord. 
that if we allow him he will heal he will do what no one else can do he does not condemn he's reaching out in love saying I want to break you this stagnation from your life I want to I've got use for your life I want to take you higher. I want to do more with your life. But I need you to let these things go that's bothered you for years. Let the preacher go. Let the deacon go. Let the mother of the church go. Let the usher go. Whoever it was. Let them go. Tell God I want to walk the path of a deeper life I want to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ you may be here and you may need images healed memories healed of the past where you've been hurt traumas came to set you back you may be here but God says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good and the gospel to the poor the meek to heal broken hearts set free those that are bruised and preach the year of release and the year of God's favor God has that for you and I while heads are bowed and eyes are closed if there's anyone that you you want to come back to God say I heard the message and I really want to come back to God I wandered far from God but I want to come back I want you to know that God has open arms like he did the prodigal son he wandered and squandered all of his living and he realized that he was living less than even the hired servants of his father and when he came to himself, he says, even the servants are living better than I'm living. He said, I know what I'll do. I'll go back to my father. I'll tell him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. Just make me a hired servant. But to his amazement, God made him more than a hired servant. He says, you're my son. You're my son. And the father stretched out his hands and ran, ran to him. He was so glad. 